This video is sponsored by Extra Wallets. Go to the link in the description below or go to extra.com and use the promo code PALEO to get 25% off your purchase of Extra Wallets. Australia is a continent that kind of has a bad reputation, especially among people who don't live there. In particular, it has a lot to do with the amount of animals that can easily end you. And although there is some truth to this, I personally think that Australia really isn't all that bad. If you think about it, when it comes to animals that could actually eat you, it's pretty much just the saltwater crocodile down there. And like, great white sharks if you include the water around Australia. But those can turn up other places. Most of the things that people freak out about are smaller, venomous animals that could never hope to eat you. But I guess that's no small comfort considering it doesn't change how dead they can make you. But in my personal opinion, at least today, Africa is scarier than Australia. But most non-Australians are still terrified of this continent. We've all seen the memes. It's thought of as the continent that most wants to kill you. And Australians love to play into this and mess with people. Ever heard of the drop bear? Yeah, it's totally a real thing. Maybe someday I'll actually make a video about it. Maybe sometime around the beginning of April. But anyway, despite me feeling that Australia doesn't fully deserve its reputation, there is one Aussie creature that does still kind of freak me out. The Sydney Funnelweb Spider. Understand, I'm not an arachnophobic. These spiders in particular freak me out. Why? Well, for starters, they have a tendency to wander into people's houses, especially males when looking for females. And although I wouldn't exactly say that they want to bite people, they are quicker than most to let people know that they are willing to bite them by rearing up like this and presenting their fangs. Think of this as like a cobra hooding up. It's meant to be a warning. Which brings me to the next reason why these guys freak me out. The fangs. These fangs hold the world record for the longest fangs of any living spider, and are strong enough to bite through a human finger or toenail. And if they do manage to stick you with these fangs that they love to show off, that's when something that defies all reason will happen. You see, if your dog gets bitten by a Sydney funnel web, it will hurt. But, barring any allergic reaction, your dog will probably be fine. However, if you get bitten by a Sydney funnel web and you do not seek immediate medical attention, you will very likely die. This is because the delta atrachotoxin compound that makes up their venom is particularly devastating to primates. That means you. This spider which evolved on a landmass completely devoid of any placental mammals except for bats until around 60,000 years ago, has venom that is particularly good at killing you. And because of all the behaviors I just listed off, these spiders are, in my opinion, one of the most dangerous animals the land down under has to offer. Now, that being said, Australia is a continent that I feel was infinitely more dangerous in the past than it is today. This is because, like most other continents, many of the most dangerous animals are no longer around. And we're still discovering more and more pieces of the puzzle to figure out just how dangerous prehistoric Australia used to be. And the two most recent discoveries are particularly interesting because... They're not only creatures that probably live directly alongside one another, but they are actually somewhat closely related to the two most dangerous animals Australia has today, at least in my opinion. The one that is most likely to kill you, and the one that is most likely to eat you. So let's check out why ancient Australia was so much more dangerous than Australia today. It's dangerous to go unprepared. Here, take this. What is that? This is the sleek and compact Parliament Wallet by Extra Wallets, in a stylish steel blue. What are you doing? What? You've been sick and someone's gotta pay the bills. Here, give me my wallet. Wait, no. Hey, 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 get back here! As you can see, 
This extra wallet is half the width of an old conventional wallet. It's nice and compact and durable, but it still holds up to 12 cards and cash in it. Here, watch. Let's switch out all of Steve's stuff with this new steel blue permanent wallet. These wallets are made of environmentally friendly materials like vegan Italian leather and space gray aluminum. And they're super safe and secure, with RFID blocking to protect your cards from wireless skimming. And get this, they have a solar-powered tracking device that lets you track your wallet's location with your phone. And just two hours of sunlight can charge the tracker for up to three months. And you don't have to worry about your cards falling out either. They're held securely inside, and if you ever want to get them out, you just press this button right here and... Whoop! Instant access! If you're interested in picking up an extra wallet today, go to the link in the description or go to extra.com and type paleo to get 25% off your purchase. Again, go to shopextra.com slash paleoanalysis or use the coupon code paleo at checkout to get 25% off these awesome wallets. Now, I gotta run. <laughs> get back here, vermin! Huh, that is kinda nice. And I do need a new wallet. Anyway. Getting back to all the nightmare fuel that we've recently unearthed, we have to go back to Australia during one of my favorite times to talk about. The Miocene, around 12 million years ago. This was a time when all across the world placental mammals were taking over. With the one exception, of course, being Australia. Here, the dominant mammals would be the marsupials and the egg-laying monotremes. But really, this land was still dominated by birds and reptiles. Many of the groups that would eventually become larger were just beginning to come into their own. This was because, at least early on in the Miocene, a good portion of Australia was still covered in tropical and subtropical forests, and many of the marsupials who lived there were still small. For example, the marsupial lions were already adapted to be predators, but they were still a far cry from the jaguar-sized thalicaleo that would eventually become the top mammalian carnivore of the Pleistocene. For now, they were still around a, the dog-sized wackaleo, and some of the different mammals were even smaller than that. Things like proto-wallabies likely lived in fear of wackaleo prowling in the trees. But, with a recent discovery, we now know that life was not safe for them on the ground either. Because if one of these small marsupials wandered past the wrong hole in the ground, they would become a meal for this creature. Megamonodontium. The giant trapdoor spider. At four to five times the size of most modern trapdoor and funnel web spiders, this species was likely capable of snatching small vertebrates. This spider just recently was discovered, and it's already made a bunch of headlines. Obviously, this is one of the largest spider fossils ever found. But also, besides being a holotype specimen for an entirely new species, it's also only the fourth spider fossil ever found in Australia. This is because spiders don't tend to fossilize very well in general. Partly because of how easily their bodies can be crushed, as well as the forest environments that the overwhelming majority of spiders prefer to live in is not actually the best for preservation. So really, it's actually a huge stroke of luck that this fossil even exists at all. But the next discovery actually was made from studying a multitude of fossils that were already discovered and realizing that we had something totally unexpected on our hands. Along the waterways and billabongs that fed the Miocene Australian forests, it would not be uncommon to see all manner of marsupials and different Australian fauna approaching the water's edge for a drink. One of the largest mammals on the continent at this time was a wombat ancestor about the size of a black bear. It had heavy bones and specialized teeth for grinding up tough vegetation. These would all be traits that would be passed down through the generations until we get to the massive diprotodons the size of a white rhino in the Pleistocene. But they were not that big and defensive just yet. And any time that they were at the water's edge, there was always a chance of an attack by a crocodile. But these are not the ancestors of the saltwater crocodile today. This was the Baru crocodiles, also known as the cleaver-headed crocodiles. Of which, from the remains that have been found over the years, we've just recently identified a third species. Now, these crocs grew to around the same size as modern saltwater crocodiles today, 
but as their name suggests, they were more robust with a powerful head and an even more dangerous set of jaws than their modern cousins. These creatures were specialized in hunting the biggest prey available at the time like the previously mentioned bear-sized wombats, as well as the massive flightless birds called Dromanithids, a group that, despite being similar in body shape to animals like the Ratites, is actually closest related to waterfowl, which is where these 3-meter, 500-kilogram birds got nicknames like Thunderbird and the Demon Duck of Doom. These birds were especially heavily built, somewhat comparable to the elephant birds of Madagascar, and these were likely the reason why these crocodiles had such robust anatomy. These crocodiles are actually a bit of a lost chapter from another video where I talked about the history of land crocs about a year ago. In that, I discussed how the Australian Mikasukid crocodiles branched out into two different families, the ones who were aquatic like modern crocs today and the terrestrial ones. And we focus on the land crocs there, because that was the topic of the video. But now, we're discussing the other half, because the Baru crocs are the aquatic Mikosukids. Like I said before, these crocodiles are actually very distantly related to modern crocodilians, separating from other crocodiles around 60 million years ago, in the beginning of the Cenozoic era. But, unfortunately for all these animals, the times were changing. And as the Miocene continues on, the world would slowly become less and less hospitable for these Australian jungle horrors. We've actually talked quite a bit about Australia on this channel, and rightfully so, it's one of my favorite topics. But every time that we get to the Cenozoic era, the story is the same. As we go forward in time, the forests begin to retreat and they're replaced by first grassland and then desert, leading to eventually the Australia that we see today. There's a reason why 80% of the human population of Australia all resides along the Gold Coast, or the East Coast. And around this time is when the forest started to get smaller and many of the once tiny mammals started getting bigger to take over the new open terrain. This likely spelled the end for the giant trapdoor spider. But this explanation doesn't exactly fit for the Baru crocodile. After all, these guys were built specifically to handle big prey. Surely, animals like kangaroos, giant diprotodons, and even more giant birds like Jenny Ornis would just be more opportunities for the cleaver-headed crocs. So why did they disappear? It's believed that the downfall of the Baru crocodiles is likely tied to the arrival and expansion of similar predators in the genus Crocodilus the direct ancestors to the modern saltwater crocodile. It's unknown exactly why these crocs won out where the Mikasukids failed, but the expansion of the crocodilus genus of crocodilians seems to match up in time with the fall of the aquatic Mikasukids. Other members of the Mikasukid line would live on into the Pleistocene by switching to become terrestrial super predators. You can learn more about these animals in my video talking about the history of land crocs. But, for the Baru croc, it was the end of the line. Today, the saltwater crocodile is the undisputed king of the outback. And, in my opinion, the Sydney funnel-web spider pretty much owns any pair of shoes it decides to crawl into. These are some of the most dangerous animals on what is thought to be the most deadly continent on Earth. But, the thing is, Saltwater crocodiles are really no more difficult to avoid issues with than any other crocodilian. I've lived around alligators my entire life, and you know how many times I've been bitten? None. Because I don't put myself in situations where I can get bitten by an alligator. I know this isn't 100% foolproof, but trust me, it's not like they're actually all that difficult to avoid. And if you end up getting bitten by a Sydney funnel web, you definitely need to seek immediate medical attention. If you don't, you will probably die. But if you do, you will probably survive. This is because there are people out there, like a few friends of mine, 
who actively keep and milk funnel webs for their venom for the purpose of making anti-venom and saving lives. Skylar, you're doing great work, but you're also psychotic. Anyway, I would like to thank Extra Wallets for sponsoring this video. If you want to get 25% off any purchase with them, just go to shopextra.com slash paleoanalysis, or click on the link in the description and enter the promo code PALEO at checkout. I want to thank everybody for your patience. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded. I'm feeling much better, and I'm super excited to get into future projects on the channel. I've got a lot of cool things planned in the coming months, and I can't wait to share it with you all. Hey, Steve. What are we going to get to evolve? Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.